Jun is doing his best to save the planet, or at least one part of it. This pond. Tai Jun is learning about environmental preservation and sustainability. On the agenda today, how frogs survive in ponds. This is the green school on the Indonesian island of Bali. The bamboo paradise is located around a quarter of an hour south of the small city of Ubud. There is no central school building. Instead, individual classrooms are spread across an eight hectare campus. Some of the lessons, for instance, in green studies, take place outdoors. So originally, it was growing like this. What do you guys think? Should we do just rows? Or do you, should we do like a clump? In no time, a bit of biosphere is ready. I took the role of a client today. So I told them, like, this is my pond. I want them to fix it up. And I gave them sort of some demands. Uh, we've been studying the pond for two weeks. And we learned that the frogs are dying in here because there's no escape routes. This gravel will allow the frogs to reach land. It's really fun, like, having classrooms, like, right next to nature. And so you can just, like, look out your wall and, like, nature is right there and you're, like, growing plants. And... Solar panels provide 80% of the school's power. The rest comes from a biogas generator that is fueled by composting toilets. Each class has its own garden and supplies the school canteen with food. On today's menu is fresh tomato salad. Along with ecological subjects, the school also offers standard courses in math, grammar, philosophy, or physics. The students come from almost 40 different countries. The curriculum is internationally certified. Right now in science class, we're doing a physics sort of uh, lab slash, what, what, what do I call it? A design engineering project. Yes, we're doing a whole project where we have to build a roller coaster and uh, made out of rattan and bamboo and glue, of course. And we have to build it and make it flow. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to take something from the natural environment, from the jungle, and construct from scratch a roller coaster that shows all the different points of physics and motion along the way. They have time and space to be creative with, with the bamboo, with the rattan, with each other and the, the whole group dynamic piece. It's, it's just a much more thematic approach to teaching than you would get in a traditional school. It's recess, a chance to check out the local surroundings. Here, concrete takes the place of bamboo. Bali's environment has suffered greatly from unbridled tourism and the rapid growth of the island's population. New settlements and streets have been built where palm trees used to grow. Sometimes, religious rituals are all that remain of the old Bali. Bali lacks an efficient waste disposal system. Garbage is simply burned. Back at the green school, after recess, it's time for math. But class begins with an Israeli folk dance. At the Green School, the emphasis is on combining practical skills with an awareness of the importance of our environment. There's so many uh, kinesthetic aspects that I can teach through the folk dance. Moving forward, moving backwards, keeping a beat, stepping to the right, stepping to the left. All amazing skills which are for our human body. That's a sustainable education. It's an education for human beings, not for universities.
Lunchtime. The kids are enjoying some Balinese dishes, Italian pasta, and, of course, fresh tomatoes. The food is served in wicker baskets lined with banana leaves. They don't need to be washed. That saves water. Tuition fees are 10,000 euros a year. Balinese families can't afford that, so the green school remains an oasis for the children of wealthy foreigners. Still, maybe one day they will share the ecological knowledge they learned here, back in their home countries.